States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I always, I always assert, still cool. Thank you. Um, I'll call this regular school board meeting for Independent School District 544 to order. Our first item of business is to establish our quorum. Melanie Cole? Here. Matt Lipke? Here. Natalie Coombson? Here. Lane Danielson? Here. Stephen Bigasoff? Here. Melissa Hermes? Present. And we have a quorum. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the agenda? All in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The agenda is approved. And then the uh, Next uh, item of business is to acknowledge the 544 Education Foundation, and I'll turn it over to you, Superintendent. Yes, uh, this fall, the 544 Education Foundation has been very busy. They received uh, 22 grant applications for the Fergusville Schools, totaling almost $29,000, and they completely funded all of them, which is awesome. And uh, along with the, uh, then the, there's 544 Education uh, Foundation and there's uh, 544 donors, they're called. Um, and they also granted 67 items off of the classroom wish list. Um, examples are uh, additional items that, that to these dollars they funded a Chromebook, uh, four band uh, choir shells for the auditorium, sound shells, so they funded those. Just some great things. So can't thank the 544 Foundation enough. Blaine sits on that uh, board. Any other comments, Blaine? Well, just uh, I think one thing that stood out too. Uh, one of the one of the wish lists uh, from one of the classrooms was uh, the microscopes. I think from the science class, and they actually gave six. So I mean, just with the, the funds they had, so it was a really good deal. Cool. Yeah. Thank you to the 544 Education Foundation. <coughs> We have reports this evening from two of our principals, and we'll start with elementary principal Scott Colbeck. Well, good evening. Uh, I realize the agenda is brief tonight, therefore I have a long time to speak, is what I was told. So. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, um, as you know, maybe, parent-teacher conferences recently uh, finished up our, our fall round, and I always enjoy parent-teacher conferences. Uh, our teachers do such a nice job of displaying school work in the hallways, whether it be their writing samples or artwork. Uh, I'd just like to thank our teachers for taking the time to uh, make our school look, look so nice during conferences. Um, I have some data to share with you from attendance. At Adams School, we did have 95% of our students have somebody show up for their parent-teacher conference. So we're, we're pleased with that um, because the past couple of years, it's been, it's been noticeably a little bit lower than that, somewhere around 92 or 93%. So i um, still looking to collect some data to see what our attendance was at McKinley, but I would uh, like to think it was probably close to that 95% mark as well. Uh, one thing we tried this year that was uh, new is we gave parents an option to schedule their own child's conference online. And um, it was the first time we'd ever done that. For the <coughs> most part, we're getting some good uh, feedback and good reviews from that. Uh, we have a few ideas that we think that we can implement when it comes to the next round of conferences that might increase the participation in those who choose to schedule their conference online. Don't know if it would really affect that 95% attendance, but um, so I uh, would like to thank kind of Jesse Thorstedt in our tech department who's always kind of coming up with these ideas and uh, you know encouraging us to kind of take a step step forward when it comes to uh, utilizing um, technology. Uh, then I wanted to just mention to you we have this really neat uh, opportunity that our first and second grade students get to participate in coming up on Friday, November 10th. It will be a fun way to end the school week. But we have an assembly thanks to the work of um, the Center for the Arts. 
and Michael Burgraff gave me a call and told me about a group that's going to be in town. It's a musical group made up of two gentlemen. One stands six eight, the other one five five and a half, and they are called. Their musical group is called <coughs> Trout Fishing in America, and their target audience is grades K through three. And so, knowing that the target audience was K through three, we thought first, well, let's check out to see if we can use our auditorium here and bus all of our K through three kids over. That didn't work because um, the high school musical, uh, it, their first night is that same night, so we don't have access to the stage and so on. So then I checked with the Center for the Arts and just said, hey, how many can you hold down there? Well, about 400, which is the same as then two of our grade levels. So then it didn't make any sense to pay for nine buses and $80 a bus, $720 to bus kids down to the Center for the Arts. So long story short, these two guys are going to come over to Adams School. We're going to bus the first graders from McKinley over to Adams. And we're going to have this assembly for first and second grade, even though the target audience is K through three. So we made a good effort to see if we could involve everybody. But this is a $1,000 value that's at no cost to our school, thanks to a Center for the Arts. Um, but I wanted to share with you some of the song titles of this group. And it'll help you understand why their tar target audience is what it is. Um, a few of their titles. I think I'll need a Band-Aid. 18 wheels on a big rig. My hair had a party last night. <laughs> Daycare blues. Why I pack my lunch. And baby's got the car keys. That's just a few of them. So we just think this will be a really, really fun way to end a, a week of school. Uh, Friday, November 10th at Adams School. And then uh, just wanted to mention briefly, just talk a little bit about um, our school goals. What we, what we do between McKinley and Adams is we just kind of lump our K through two kids together and say, okay, here, here are the goals for K through two. And um, just, you know, last year's goal during the 2016-17 school year, the goal going into the last year was that 80% of our K through two students would score at the 50th percentile or greater in the area of math and reading on the, what's called the MAP test. Now, just a quick little ditty about MAP test. MAP is an acronym for Measures of Academic Progress. It's a test that our students take in the fall, winter, and spring, and this is a nationally normed test. So our students, how our students are performing is compared against kids across the nation <coughs> who are taking this same test. Um, that's why we can try to get 80% of our kids in the top 50%. If we are only comparing our kids against our kids, we know that only half of them could be in the top 50%. And we also know because Minnesota is very strong academically, if we were comparing our K-2 through kids against just Minnesota K through two kids, we probably wouldn't be maybe as aggressive in saying, hey, we're gonna to try to get 80% of our kids in the top 50% percentile." So uh, here's the result. So that was last year's goal. We can't find out how, you know, how we do towards that goal until in the spring when we get these results back. Um, we found out that overall, we, we missed the goal by 2%. Uh, Seventy-eight percent of our K through student K through two students scored at the 50, 50th percentile or greater. But then, when we drill that down even more, and we look at just the math, we learn that eighty-three and a half percent of our kids scored at the 50th percentile or greater in math, and then seventy-four <coughs> percent of them uh, scored at the 50th percentile or greater in the area of reading. So when we look at it and we combine those two subject areas, overall it was 78% of our kids were in the 50th percentile or higher. When we break it down, math was a little bit higher than reading. I talked to Carrie Thompson about that. and Her comment was, well, you know, Scott, that would make sense because in the state of Minnesota, our state has done so much work in the area of math standards. Uh, so much work uh, put into that area and we have very, very high uh, rigorous standards in the area of math across the state of Minnesota. 
So then we wanted to set a goal for this year. And I want to preface this by saying, okay, if last year 78% of our kids um, scored in the 50th percentile or greater, then why is the goal this year stating that 76% of students will score at the 50th percentile or greater on the MAP assessment? And let me explain to you why and what's behind that. We looked at last year's kindergartners and last year's first graders, knowing that we would have that group with us this year, right, in first and second grade, and not knowing anything about the incoming kindergarten group. And so when we just looked at how those kids performed last year in kindergarten and first grade, what we learned from that group is that overall, 74% of the kids in that group, in that returning group, scored in the 50th percentile or greater. So then we thought, okay, if 74% of them did, and we choose a goal to up that to 76, what does that look like in just sheer number of students? And that would just mean for us that we would have 15 more students score at the 50th percentile or higher when it comes to those tests. So, um, I mean, people could, we could have a long discussion and uh, dialogue about you know, that, that number. I honestly think that what we set that number on, um, whether it be 75, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, I think I can assure you that it, the effort that our teachers give every day when they come to school, when they come to work, is going to be the same good effort that, that they give now. And um, so we, we just wanted to, you know, you set a goal, you want to be realistic with it. I always like to use this example. I could, um, I could set a goal to lose 10 pounds and lose 12, and I met my goal. But I could also set a goal to lose 20 pounds and lose 18 and not meet my goal. But I'm better off losing 18 and not meeting my goal than losing 12 and meeting my goal. So, you know, you can have some fun with those numbers and talk about goals and where you want to set them. And and how you want to, you know, do you meet them or do you not meet them? Um, and so I think we're, you know, we try to find that nice little balance there to be realistic, yet to be, um, yet to have something to kind of shoot towards or shoot for. So I came to you tonight with this idea that I was just going to talk about three things, conferences, a musical group, and school goals. And uh, that's what I have for you tonight. All right. Any questions? And it could have been a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, thank you. Yeah, all right, thank you. And now we'll have Tim Hiranda, our um, elementary principal at Cleveland. Um, I was hoping you would notice my Yes, I know. I thought you'd be curious why I'm wearing the Harlem Cold Trotters jersey tonight. But we have a um, very special week going on at Cleveland this week, and it is Friendship Week. Um, and thanks to our counselor, Katie Yagi, she does a great job of heading this up and promoting it. Um, so we have these little signs all over Cleveland and a big bulletin board in the hallway that's highlighting some of the special days this week. But um, we're talking about um, being positive, making positive friendship choices and kindness. And um, today was um, Be a Good Sport Day, wear sports attire and um, things like that. Tomorrow, the theme is um, show that you care, have wacky hair. Um, and that's always a hit for the kids. They come with um, quite the hairdos tomorrow morning. Um, Wednesday is positive friend choices. Um, positive friendship choices are no sweat. Um, wear sweats to school. And Thursday is hats off to making new friends, and we'll have hats all over the building. And then Friday is otters are respectful and responsible, and we'll be wearing maroon gold for school spirit um, day. So it's a, a week that the kids really look forward to. Um, we don't, in the elementary level, we don't fully participate in all the dress up days that homecoming brings and um, some of those themes, but um, this is a week that uh, we've made it, uh, an annual event. And so today was full of sports attire, it was great. Um, like uh, Katie Yagi, um, our school counselor, um, had a baby on Saturday morning, a baby, welcomed a baby girl to their family. Um, so she's going to be taking a maternity leave, and in her place we have Lydia Christensen, who
who will be subbing and um, acting as our school counselor. So we're, we're grateful that we'll have some ongoing support for those students who um, look for that um, and some kids who um, do have some ongoing counseling services on a regular basis. So we're, we're grateful that Lydia will be joining us starting tomorrow. Um, and I'm going to echo Mr. Kolbeck about conferences. Um, it's Those are wonderful days to have families um, come in and visit with the teachers and see their students' desk and classroom. Um, some of those kids are showing off their lockers, um, and the teachers do an outstanding job of displaying some artwork, some writing pieces, and having lots of writing samples available for parents. So a lot, a lot goes into planning for those um, conferences um, in the fall and also again in the spring. Um, we, uh, we have received lots of positive feedback regarding the online sign up for conferences this year from um, teachers appreciated that, uh, parents had lots of positive comments, um, <coughs> you know, secretaries as well, that was a big task that they tackled each and every um, fall and spring and so it lightened their load in that regard too and just really gave parents that opportunity to see what are the available conference slots and select one that was going to work for them. Um, you know, and many families have kids in the different buildings across the district so they could plan accordingly and um, some planned all their conferences on the same day, allowing some travel time between. And um, some families chose conferences on different days just to lighten their load and make that work for their family's plans as well. So um, that, was, that was a great improvement in that regard. Um, I didn't tabulate all of our percentages. I was receiving those um, kind of the attendance list from teachers yet today, but it was an excellent attendance, and some had stars on their sheets that they were turning in saying 100% um, attendance, and we're very, very excited about, about that. Um, I was just noting today that we um, have only eight days before school, eight school days before the end of first quarter, um, which is upon us next Thursday, November 2nd already. Um, at the elementary level, we are moving to a different progress report, um, quarterly progress report. Um, parents will see a different grading scale on the elementary report cards this year with um, an X noting that an area may not be assessed at this current time. Um, and then a 1, 2, 3, or 4, which is similar to the um, s scale that MCA uses about um, partially meeting standards, not yet meeting standards, meeting standards, or exceeding standards. So those, um, the elementary report cards will have that um, reflected grading scale. And um, I too brought along some building goals to report on. Um, during the 2016-17 school, I'll, I'll reflect on last year's goals and our, our performance. Um, we had a building goal that um, students attending Cleveland School would achieve 7% or greater proficiency above the state average in both math and reading. Um, third graders, um, re in the area of reading, the state average was 57%, and uh, Fergus Falls third graders performed um, at 69%. 12% greater proficiency than the state average. And in the area of math, um, there was a, it was a state average of 69% with Fergus Falls third graders scoring 75% um, proficiency, which is 6% greater than the state average. Uh, fourth graders in the area of reading performed, uh, state average was 58% in the area of reading on the MCA test. Our Fergus Falls fourth graders performed at 60% proficiency, um, so 2% greater um, proficiency than the state average. And in the area of math, we were 6% greater than the state average of 68%, um, performing with 74% proficiency. So lots, lots to celebrate there. Um, they, they exceeded the, the state average, um, you know, anywhere from 2 to 3% um, above the, the state average in math and reading. Um, and I do have fifth grade, although fifth grade's at Kennedy, and um, they were um, members of Cleveland last year. And reading, in the area of reading, fifth graders performed at 68%, or the state average, pardon me, was 68%. Our fifth graders performed with 76% proficiency, which is 8% above the state average. Um, in the area of math, we were, we fell a little bit short, 2% um, below that state average, um, and that's an area that uh, we continue to have discussion on and what can we do and provide those fifth graders to um, um, expand their, their performance in that area of math. Um, and in the area of science, 
Um, the state average was a 61%, and our fifth graders performed with 74% 70, proficiency, which is a 13% greater than the um, state average proficiency. So lots of good things happening there. Um, so this year, as we looked at what um, areas are we going to focus in, our Cleveland board, our, our Cleveland goal is that students will score 10% or greater proficiency above the MCA state average in math and reading. So we're stretching ourselves and um, going from last year's goal of 7% greater proficiency to 10%. Um, third grade teachers um, during the annual <coughs> season had some great discussion um, about what their focus is going to be and their goal is that third grade students will score 10% or greater proficiency above the MCA state average in <coughs> math. So they're really making math their grade level uh, focus and um, they've outlined several different um, strategies that they're going to implement. Um, one of them is um, utilizing the new math curriculum with fidelity um, and using the spiraling concept that the company um, promotes um, so that the students see that math um, instruction in a spiraled format so it's not just compartmentalized but it's ongoing over the course of the school year. Um, we uh, have the IXL program available for students to use during their school day and also at home um, so they're very much going to be using IXL um, practice time at ma at, in math at school and also communicating that to parents and encouraging them um, to have their students utilize that program at home as well. Um, teachers are ex continuously exploring um, new materials to differentiate instruction. Um, uh, the math curriculum features some math games um, where they're working with numbers on cards and, and different hands-on materials. And so um, oftentimes you might walk in a classroom and everybody's spread across the classroom and on the floor and at tables um, utilizing these math math games that help them practice those skills that they're learning. So that's third grade. Uh, fourth grade, um, their goal is students will perform 10% or greater proficiency above the state MCA average in reading, reading informational text. And fourth grade teachers um, outlined um, their strategies include um, reading more informational text when they're using um, the accelerated reader program, helping students select that informational text. Um, they're going to have a greater emphasis on science and social studies curriculum text and that's a full of vocabulary and um, so lots of vocabulary taught there. And then um, using IXL programs and some sub supplemental resources um, as well as the, our treasures curriculum to really hone in on that informational text reading and helping them become um, critical readers as well. And then lastly, um, um, I, I work with the special ed PLC group uh, across the elementary grade levels and um, it's been um, a joy to work with that group. There's some new special ed teachers that have joined the special ed department this year and they bring a wealth of knowledge and ideas um, to incorporate to those who have been um, teaching in our district for some time. But our elementary special ed uh, team, um, they set a goal of having 50% of the special ed students will increase their individual performance on standardized tests, and sometimes that's an MCA test and sometimes MTAS, um, a different, uh, more test that uh, provides more hands-on activities to show what they know, um, in the areas of reading and math by meeting their individual expected growth. And so when um, those teachers are meeting with the IEP teams, they really um, look at that child's individual goals and objectives and measuring the, their progress on at an individual level. And then they too, um, at the end of the year, have that opportunity to uh, use the uh, standardized test to fully measure um, some, some of that growth. So they've, um, the special ed teachers have had some valuable discussion on evaluating the curriculum that our special ed department uses from kindergarten through fifth grade um, and really um, sorting out, you know, kind of weeding the garden, keeping what is really, really um, valuable and proving to be helpful and um, tossing some things out the window so that they really are using the materials um, at hand and that also go hand in hand with the um, selected curriculums like treasures and, and our math curriculum as well. So lots of good things happening in, in the area of um, curriculum and, and goal setting in our district. And that's all I have for you today.
All right, thank you. Any questions for Principal Ryan? <clears throat> thank you. And then Superintendent Ness. Yes, a few items here. I have a thank you to Deb Wellman. Uh, she, there's a very nice article in the, in the Daily Journal uh, this week. She and has me. That was yeah. you. Thank yep. you for writing that. <laughs> yep, no and and uh, related to Jaws volunteering for, I think, the last five years, she's been there three times per week, which is very dedicated. Uh, good weather, bad weather, all of that. Uh, so I want to thank Deb Wellman. Uh, remind people that there is a school board election. We haven't heard much about it lately, but Missy uh, Hermes and uh, Angela Fiedler are running for the school board position. And that election is on November 7th. If people are looking for an absentee ballot, they can do that at the district office right here at Kennedy Secondary School. Uh, update on some playoffs here. Our volleyball team uh, was seated number four. They'll play on Thursday versus Detroit Lakes, 7 p.m. right here at the Gold Gym. Uh, cross, cross country section, we're hosting this on Thursday, um, but it's really bad weather on Thursday, so they might be switching that to Friday, so stay tuned on that one. Uh, our football team was seated number two. They will be play on Saturday. They got a first round bye, so they don't play tomorrow night, but they'll play Saturday at 6 p.m. and they will play the winner of Wilmer versus Detroit Lakes. And then another item here, uh, we have some mentee training. So along with our, um, our mentors meeting with the new hires all the time, we're also doing some training. This, uh, the first one was done more one-on-one -on -one with parent-teacher conferences because there's such a wide variety. A high school teacher parent, uh, parent-teacher conference is much different than a kindergarten one, for example. So we had the mentors do that training one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But this one is on a special education referrals. This October is sort of the time where uh, needs of students come to light. Uh, do they read well or are there behavior issues? All of those things come to light about now. So we are going to have a training on Wednesday afternoon uh, after school in the uh, high school choir room. And that is going to be open to everyone because we've had people go, hey, I could use some training on that as well. So uh, it'll be open to new hires, but also to all staff because they can get, that's one of the uh, relicensure requirements is all about special education with accommodations, et cetera. So uh, that is open to the group there. And that is my report. Lots of, like, like, our, like our principal said, lots of good things, parent-teacher conferences, uh, very well attended, and uh, we'll hear more from Mr. Maki when he when he gets back at our next meeting. All right. Any questions for the superintendent on his report? Okay. Moving forward, then we'll review the general consent items, and and in this uh, category, we have several things to consider: the approval of our minutes from the last regular board meeting held on October 9th. And then two per personnel um, moves. Yes, uh, Riley Seeland is an elementary teacher. She is uh, uh, as a substitute, hiring her as a substitute for a maternity leave, at, and that's a point about, about a quarter FTE. And then uh, resignation, Michelle Kangas. Shelly Kangas is resigning as an elementary teacher at IQ Academy, and so I recommend approval of those items. All right. Is there a motion to approve the general consent items? So moved. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion on the items? All in favor of approving, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. All right, we approved that. We'll move on to new business. Um, looking for a motion to change the 2017-18 school district calendar, so this year's calendar. On March 22nd, 2018, there will be a full day of school and not early out, that's uh, erroneous in the calendar. So is there a motion to make that change? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? I can explain. Uh, as we work together to develop the calendar, uh, we were talking about having parent-teacher conferences around the Easter week, uh, and uh, what happened was uh, we decided against that, and we moved the uh, parent-teacher conferences uh, to I think it's the week of March 5th or so. So our early out is March 2nd, but it stayed on on the 22nd as well. We doubled up. So uh, March 22nd is the last day of the quarter, so that'll be a full day. And then the next day, we have a, a, a staff development day where PLC is in the morning and work time in the afternoon. So it's a clerical error that we're correcting here. All right. 
And usually um, the school's pretty good about sending home notes and all that. We will do that. All right. Any other discussion or commentary? All in favor of the approving the change, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. I'd like to entertain a motion for calling for roofing bids on uh, Kennedy Secondary School. Will someone offer that uh, motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. And we'll uh, turn to Mark for some background here. Yeah, I just want to get this project going uh, in terms of uh, getting it bid and so forth. Get it early on the agenda of any roofing contractors that are out there so that when the spring comes rolling around, we're not competing uh, to getting the work done. Uh, the work that will be done will be uh, at the Kennedy Building. Um, I'm about 85% sure that's where it's going to be at this stage of the game. It's a roof above the music room. Uh, the other possibility is a roof over at the Roosevelt Building that we would would do. So, um, just wanting to get the call for roofing bids out there. Uh, I think I've got this set up so that December 7th, I believe, is when the bids would be back and we would know. All right. Any discussion from the board or questions about the... Mark, is this going to be like we did over at Cleveland and Adams, or is this going to be just... If it's this building here, it'll be a replacement. It won't be a refurbishment like we did. It'll okay. be an actual tear-off and put new okay. on. That roof has the membrane with the rock ballast on it. Mm -hmm. So once we get rid of the, the rock, of course, everything just rises. So put a new membrane on it and it'd be adhered rather than ballast. Okay. And that is something we can get done over the summer. That's my goal, yeah. Okay. Final project product to be an adhered membrane? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice summary. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. All right, any other comments? All in favor of uh, calling for approving the motion to call for bids for roofing, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. And then uh, along the same lines, um, I'm looking for a motion to call for bids on the food for the meal program. So moved. Is there a second? A second. All right, and again to you, Mr. Manson. Um one of the things school districts are required to do is to go out for bid on food. Uh, we had a, we could do it once a year, but then you have to have kind of a complicated schedule for um, kind of escalator clauses and stuff like that that may happen due to inflation. Mm -hmm. So rather to, than do that, uh, we just simply decided we're going to bid in three chunks. We did our first chunk back in uh, November. And so we're now at the point where we need to do our second chunk to get us through the middle part of the school year. And then uh, we'll do an, get us again in uh, probably January, February to finish out the school year. So that's what this is about. Okay. Food service program. All right. So when you said November, it was for last November for this school year, right? Correct. Okay. That's how that goes. Any Mark, other? Mark, am I reading that right? So bids will be due, due November 21st. But awarded it to November 20th? Uh, I think that it's actually November 27th. Okay. I think that's a typo. Okay. So just Which after the, Thanksgiving. The school board meeting is November 20th. Okay. <coughs> so it's the third. It well, went then, up. Yeah, then something's off by the week. So. Because he's saying it's due by the 20th. Right. <laughs> yeah, so you'll have to have them due on the 14th. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. you just say the yeah. date, the date didn't Jive die in there. Yeah. Yeah. Because don't you have a school board meeting on the 27th? No, it, we changed it to the 21. Yep, we're just doing one that All right, so then it would be November 15th. That they're due by? That they're due by. Okay. And then uh, 20th would be the school board meeting. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thanks for catching All right, any other questions or comments on the motion for calling for bids on the food? All in favor of approving that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. <coughs> All right, we got that approved. And we're going to stick around for our facility um, review, long term facility committee. Um, we'll meet tonight at 6. The board will hang out here and do a general update, just kind of catch up on things uh, in the interim. And so our next regular meeting will be Monday, the 20th.
Is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Move. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on adjourning? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.